If you want to burn more calories with exercise, you need to see this. It's obvious that running, biking and in general doing physical activities burn calories. So if you're looking to lose weight, exercising seems like a no-brainer. So why is it that people see some results in the beginning, though the more they do, the less it seems to be working? I mean, you put in all this effort and nothing really happens. Trust me, this is normal. It's actually the way our body is designed. And once you understand this, you will no longer have to do unnecessary workouts just to burn more calories. So let's talk about the science of burning calories with cardio. In case you don't know me, I'm Ingen, a Norwegian Viking and researcher sharing science-based no BS tips and truth about losing weight naturally and effectively without suffering in the process. Click the thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. As we all know, if we move our body, we'll burn more calories than if we simply just lay on the couch. So it just makes sense to think that the more we move our body, the more energy we'll spend, right? The more calories we'll burn seems obvious. Well, take running for example. We obviously burn more calories if we run five kilometers per day than if we only run two, right? And we obviously burn more calories if we run a whopping 15 kilometers per day than if we run five kilometers per day, right? I know this seems too basic, though there is a catch. About 30 years ago, a group of men and women who were not used to exercising joined a training program designed to help them run or prepare them for running a half marathon. Over the course of more than 40 weeks, they had to run increasingly longer distances per week. In fact, on average, they ran about 25 kilometers per week by week eight, about 36 kilometers per week by week 20, and about 50 kilometers per week by week 40. So what we would expect is for the number of calories they burned per day on average to have increased according to how much more they were running each week, right? Well, actually, for the men, the total calories they burned actually started to plateau and even decreased a bit from week 20 to week 40. And when it comes to the women, they actually burned fewer calories in weeks 20 and 40 than during week 8 even though they were doing a lot more running. How could this be? This seems totally counterintuitive, doesn't it? Well, here's the thing. We may burn more calories during the exercise if we exercise more. However, we won't necessarily burn that many calories more in total. The total number of calories we burn per day or per week. And that's the thing that actually matters when it comes to burning calories with exercise if you're trying to lose weight. What we're looking for is to burn more calories in total to increase our calories out, right? And we think we can simply increase our total calories out by doing more exercise. However, the more you actually put into doing cardio exercises, the less you'll actually get out of it in the sense of increasing your calories out. Why? How does this make sense? Again, you obviously burn more calories if you run 50 kilometers than if you run 25. So your calories out should increase accordingly, right? But when you're looking at it like that, you're assuming that everything else stays the same. That the number of calories your body burns on everything other than exercise stays the same. While on top of that, you keep increasing the amount of calories that you burn with exercising. But that's not what actually happens. You see, most of the calories your body spends every day is unrelated to physical activity. Your body spends energy on your brain, immune system, breathing, keeping your heart pumping, your liver and kidneys functioning, your digestive system, and more. And what happens is that when you get to a certain amount of exercise, your body starts to compensate for some of the calories that you burn during exercise by spending less energy on these other tasks. And the more you exercise, the more the body compensates and the less your efforts actually pay off when it comes to burning calories. I'll talk about some serious side effects of this shortly, which are especially important for women. But you see, this is why people don't see the results they expect when they do more and more exercise to burn calories. They put in a lot of effort to exercise more, yet they don't see much of a difference in the number on the scale. Actually, there's even a chance you'd gain weight because exercising increases hunger. So if you exercise more, you may naturally feel like eating more food. Though if you don't actually increase your calories out by much, you may easily end up increasing your calories in more than you increased your calories out. There are women that will tell you that they do a ton of cardio, yet still they just can't seem to lose weight. And then they go through great lengths to add even more cardio, yet 
still nothing happens. And then they ask you to train you for help and they're told to do more. You're obviously not exercising enough. So <laughs> how do you know when it's enough or maybe too much? Well, especially for women, there's something very serious to consider. First though, if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you'd like, and make sure you're subscribed. And for lots more weight loss tips, follow me on Instagram at vikingingun. Apart from not being an effective weight loss strategy, exercising a lot can have some serious side effects. Because remember, after a certain point, your body starts to compensate by spending less energy on other tasks. And by by the way, this effect is stronger in overweight people. Overweight people are found to compensate a lot more than leaner people. And what happens when the body has less energy to spend on these other tasks? Well, your immune system may suffer, which is of course a bigger big deal. You may experience fatigue, you may not recover as quickly. And for us women, our menstrual cycle may suffer. Actually, it's well documented that exercising can disrupt women's menstrual cycles. Also in women who are maintaining their weight, especially for female athletes, this is well known. Though this paper emphasizes that exercise associated ovarian suppression is not limited to trained or excessively lean athletes. And even more so that even a moderate amount of cardio can have an effect on ovarian function. In their study, the average running distance was only 12.5 miles per week or 20 kilometers per week. That's an average of only three kilometers per day or 1.8 miles per day. And they even said that moderate exercise of an hour or more a day has also been linked to a 4.7 fold increase in the risk of infertility among women who have not been pregnant. And this can even go undetected for some women if they are on birth control and don't even expect to have periods. Seriously, this is not to be taken lightly. If your body is willing to give up on the possibility of having a baby, even if it's just temporary, temporary, your body is not doing well. We think athletes are the healthiest humans on this planet. Though being super active, lean and muscular in some cases isn't necessarily the best measures of health because those things don't matter in the great scheme of things if your immune system is shit, your hormones are all over the place, you're incapable of having kids simply due to how much stress you're putting on your body willingly and you feel like crap. Now, a few things to note here. I'm most certainly not saying that exercising in general isn't good. It's great. And I'll get back to how much I believe is enough or an optimal amount of exercise shortly. Also note that the numbers that I mentioned related to menstrual cycle and uh, fertility is specifically related to women who are doing cardio exercises, like for example, running. Meaning this doesn't mean that the same would happen if you did strength training instead. Though I'm sure you can end up with similar problems if you do excessive amounts of any types of exercises. With cardio, however, it seems like you may experience some unwanted side effects even with just moderate amount of exercise. Again, I'm totally pro-exercising and especially for sedentary people, adding more movement into their routine is great. Though when it comes to losing weight, we're led to believe that more is better. And in general, that we should all be exercising every single day for an hour or more, preferably at 5 a.m. on an empty stomach. This is what I call working against your body. When you exercise more and more and more in order to burn more calories so that you can lose weight, you're working against your body. You and your body are no longer working on the same team. You're forcing your body to take away energy from other important functions. You're adding unnecessary stress on your body and yourself in general, using a ton of willpower, and it's not even going to be much of a help in reaching your goal, which will likely make you feel even worse about yourself in general and about your body. As if there's something wrong with your body. It's not doing what you want it to do, even though you are putting in all this effort. But what if you worked with your body instead? What would that even look like? Have you ever thought about how overweight people actually carry extra energy with them all the time? The fat that we carry is stored energy. And by definition, overweight people have more of it. Though overweight people usually feel less energetic. They often feel less like moving their body. And they also feel more hungry. Even though they have all this energy stored, which their body could spend instead of constantly asking them for 
more energy by making them feel hungry. It's like they are constantly running low on energy even though they have all this energy available. But that's the thing. They have a lot of energy, but their body isn't using it well. It's not using the energy that they have stored or the energy that they get via their diet very efficiently. So that's what needs to change. That's what we need to work on in order to help our body lose weight. We have to restore our body's energy production, the way our body makes use of the energy it has. It's not about forcing our body to spend more energy by doing lots more exercise. It's about helping our body burn the energy it has more efficiently. And if we do that, then losing weight gets a whole lot easier. And so does maintaining your weight after you've lost weight as well. I'll talk more about this in upcoming videos, so make sure you're subscribed. And if you'd like to know step by step how you may lose weight by working with your body without having to count calories or even needing to exercise, then check out my 90 day weight loss program called Slim by Science at slimbyscience.com. You'll find the link in the description of this video. Also, if you often have have cravings, it may be a sign that you actually do need to restore your energy production. Check out this video here where I share more about that. I'll put the link to the video in the description of this video. Now let's get back to talking about exercise because you may still be wondering how much should you be exercising? What's the optimal amount to exercise if your goal is to lose weight? This study in sedentary overweight postmenopausal women found that the women who exercised for 136 minutes per week lost more weight than those exercising for 72 minutes. However, those exercising for 194 minutes per week lost less weight than those in the middle. Actually pretty similar to those exercising less than half the amount. Though what's more is that none of them lost a significant amount of body fat. And actually, the more they exercised, the less body fat they lost. This was over the course of six months. Now, these women were told to not change their eating habits, that this was not a weight loss study. Though still, wouldn't you have expected that they would lose some body fat if they went from being sedentary to exercising more than three hours per week? This just shows how important your diet is when it comes to weight loss. Really, it's pretty much all about your diet. Exercising won't get you anywhere with weight loss unless you address your diet. Still, like I said, adding some movement into your routine can have some amazing benefits. Though instead of doing cardio exercises, I personally would suggest doing activities that you enjoy. For example, skating, swimming, dancing, going for walks, playing tennis, playing soccer with your kids or hide and seek with your kids. Think of it as an opportunity for you to do something you enjoy instead of having to do something you really don't want to do. And remember, once you help restore your body's energy production, you'll naturally feel like moving your body more because your body will be able to use the energy it has more efficiently so you'll feel more energetic. Again, this is what I call working with your body. Now, if you're looking to get a bit more fit and maybe a bit toned as well, shape up your body, then you'll want to add some strength training in there as well. Though again, you do not need to do strength training every single day or for hours on end in order to see results. And there really is such a thing as too much. You can get far with just 25 minutes of strength training two to three times per week if you make the most out of those 25 minutes, both when it comes to the types of exercises that you do as well as optimizing the effort. In general though, when it comes to exercising, just make sure you pay close attention to the signals that your body is sending you. If you're totally exhausted after your workouts or you feel tired for days afterwards, you're probably pushing too much. And especially if you're noticing changes to your menstrual cycle, you should pay close attention. It's also very important to make sure that you fuel your body with the right nutrients and enough energy, even if the goal is to lose weight. In general though, exercising shouldn't be about burning more calories in order to lose weight or to earn your food. Adding some exercise can help you burn more calories in total if you're otherwise a sedentary person, though that still doesn't mean that you'll automatically lose weight unless you address your diet as well. Really, exercising isn't really about burning calories. 
it's really about building a strong and resilient body. And when you look at it like that, I believe you have a much better relationship with exercising as well. It's not a punishment or something you have to do in order to lose weight. It's something you can do if you want to build a strong and resilient body. Though remember to not overdo it because that beats the purpose of building a resilient body because your body may actually suffer instead. So listen to your body and make sure you exercise for the right reasons. Hopefully this has given you a bit of a different perspective on the whole idea of doing cardio in order to burn calories. Again, if you're looking for a step-by-step -step how you may work with your body, helping restore your body's energy production and lose weight without having to count calories and where exercising is optional, then check out my 90-day weight loss program called Slim by Science at slimbyscience.com. You'll find the link in the description of this video. You'll also want to check out these videos right here, though first I would really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.